friends, welcome to my first guide video. I'll keep this relatively short and sweet, and cover two examples of how to approach playing as a solo in Hunt Showdown. While long ammo is the meta of Hunt Showdown, almost any loadout is viable if you play to that loadout strength. In this example, I am using a Romero 77 and an Agant 1895. The Crows inside Slaughterhouse pinpointed the position of my opponents. Audio cues cannot be overstated in Hunt. The information you gather from these cues is fundamental to your success. When outnumbered in Hunt Showdown, against duos or trios, patience is key. If you can take out a Hunter before your position is compromised, great. If not, as you're about to see, you need to move quickly and reposition. As a solo, you have maneuverability on your side. Use it. Moving from my compromised position, I use my dynamite to cover my footsteps and hopefully flush the enemy to the other side. Because of my reposition, I now have an advantage against my opponents. I forced a new angle while they were occupied with the original angle. Usually I would advise you clear an area of AI before engaging enemy hunters, however in this instance I got lucky that the grunt pulled the attention of my opponent for a split second. As mentioned earlier in the video, audio cues are a large part of Hunt Showdown. This example highlights my opponent opening the double doors on the opposite side of the compound, telling me their exact position. The volume is adjusted so you can hear these doors. At this moment I realise he's going for a revive on his partner and I move to block it. Reloading while I move, just in case I have to fight more than one of them. Good fight guys, good fight. Okay, so right there, a good example of repositioning when you're outnumbered. Spoiler alert, I'm not as successful in this clip. However, it does serve as a good example of playing as a solo against duels. My weapons of choice here are a Mosin Nagant and a Caldwell Conversion Uppercut. This clip starts after the enemy team and I spotted each other, and now I am moving from this compromised position. After the kill, I use my frags to prevent any immediate push from the downed hunter's partner. If pulling back to heal, make sure you reload your weapons and prepare for the next engagement. Seems like basic stuff, but being caught out by that death click will frustrate you beyond belief.
After seeing nothing, I try to use audio cues to place my opponent, but I can't hear a thing. GG. After rotating through the map, I hear fighting at Slaughterhouse and move in to hopefully sandwich another team between this fight. What's a sandwich, you might ask? Quite simply, highlighted by this example, I am on the northern side of Slaughterhouse, there is a team right in front of me as you can see in this clip, and there is another team on the far side of Slaughterhouse on the southern half. Now, a sandwich is me being one piece of bread, the southern half being the other, and the team in the middle is the nice meaty part of this fight. Now, thankfully, because they were running from another fight, they already had some attrition, and my long ammo took out that hunter in one shot. As I mentioned previously, audio cues are fundamental to hunt. Here I use one to my advantage. The team within Slaughterhouse knows there is someone around the compound as they likely heard my fight with the team on the northern half of Slaughterhouse. I elect to flare the hive on this side to alert them to my presence on my terms. Using this distraction, I rotate round to a safe position from which I can engage this team. So, I missed my headshot, the enemy hunter flashed me, I can't see a thing. What I do still have is my compass. Using my compass, I determined that he will likely push from the same direction he threw the flash, my east, and I use my hellfire to prevent that push. A distraction, but that fails because I didn't kill the AI.
One thing this team did really well was constantly reposition every time we engaged each other. I pick up the axe hoping one of them would push inside the boss lair, but no such luck. Right here I made the fatal error of pushing the teammate of the downed hunter, exposing myself for an easy kill. Finally, we'll go over some of the points we've covered in this video. Number 1. Audio cues. Use the audio and hunt to your advantage as a solo. Be quiet when necessary, but don't be afraid to be loud if need be. Number 2. Repositioning. After every shot or two, reposition to a different angle to prevent the team from being able to flank or overpower you. Do not peek the same angle multiple times in a row. Number 3. Reloading while moving. In Hunt, you have the ability to reload even at a full sprint, so it is important to use these precious seconds to reload your weapons and prepare for the next phase of an engagement or the next fight altogether. Number 4. Patience. It is vital that you use patience while playing as a solo. It's not always necessary to go guns blazing into a round and take a shot as soon as you see enemy hunters. Stalk them. Follow them. Or you know, hunt them. Take your time to scout out your surroundings and click the head when you have that shot. Number five, positioning. I mentioned earlier in the video the idea of a sandwich. This is an example of positioning. A good tactic is to position yourself in a place with decent cover or on one side of a fight and remove the possibility of a sandwich on you. Another example is to use hard cover or traps to remove a flank opportunity from an enemy team. All of this ties into positioning. Okay, I hope this has been helpful to you or has interested you in playing as a solo in Hunt Showdown. If you like what you see here or perhaps have a suggestion for my next video, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks friends. See you in the bayou.